Hello everyone! Today we will talk about my favorite topic, anti-fraud platform. We will mainly talk about the fintech case study, but uh, we also talk about other industry examples and uh, philosophize about generalized frameworks. It would be not excessive to say that I've been working on anti-fraud for more than four years in a variety of B2C product companies. I also successfully applied the exact method I studied at university and built effective ML anti-fraud pipelines in Yandex advertisement, working with the cheaters in Playrix and frosters in Access. So the plan for today, to begin with, we look at the example of what fraud is and why anti-fraud is needed. We're going to analyze payment fraud in the fintech industry and the cheaters in gaming. Next, we'll go from simple to complex, as any ML engineer would think in solving the problem of anti-fraud. What would be the pitfalls and how to overcome them? We'll talk about ML system design, real-time processing, and uh, even about other step in pipeline development in anti-fraud process except ML. In the beginning, let's uh, delve into the concept of anti-fraud. Let's figure out why company can benefit from it. To understand what uh, anti-fraud is, first you need to define the fraud, of course. Let's say these are customer section that are not intended by company, which result in deterioration of key metrics. If the client uses internal inefficiency of the company's mechanisms, fraud calls indigenous, otherwise exogenous. Accordingly, we call anti-fraud mechanism and process that prevent this uh, medical section. I'd say that the fight against fraud can be fully automated with the uh, decisions are made based on data and understanding of the product, but without manual work, it is almost impossible to leave the anti-fraud platform completely. The definition though, the metric was not chosen by chance. It's convenient for us to formalize fraud at the set of complex action of an agent with a, our internal system when eventually had an effect on our metric. So for a unique user ID, for our fraudster, we can compare the corresponding drop in money, retention, and uh, so on. Let's start with a simple example of fraud in mobile game dev. Usually, free-to-play games are built with a paywall, a difficult place where only a very skilled player can pass through, or they must to pay in a in-game stop for additional benefits. A froster can use some software to break the game and bypass the most difficult levels. At the same time, if the game has an online competition with other participants, the same player can latch huge uh, advantage over others, uh, which spoils impression for the rest people, for sure. Here, the key metric of uh, detection will be number of attempts per level. How quickly a person passed a difficult level? Did it happen on the first time, for example? If yes, it's worth to think about it. Now it's getting a bit harder. Why does any fintech company have? So, of course, the place where customers' money is stored, which means their only mechanism also a mechanism for how this uh, money gets there. We'll discuss the study in payments, a transactional fraud linked to foreign exchange conversion rates. Let's let, let, let that um, attacker from Europe use the payment system to place Euro into USD account. At the time of submitting the application, the billing system generate a document with a fixed price of Euro USD. However, a person actually had the right to pay it or not. Therefore, he has time to see where the euro USD rate will move. If the euro becomes cheaper, then a person can make a transaction. If it becomes more expensive, then do not send money at all, don't do transaction. Thus, the payment billing creates an option for the client to buy dollars, sell euros, when the insurance of this option costs zero for client, actually. All that remains for the client is just to monitor the FX rate and create a fraud with a positive math expectation. Okay, let's build an automatic anti-fraud. Assume that we have a payment cost metric that takes into account the money that comes to us, like in one currency, in euro or Indian rupee or whatever, and which goes to the payment in another currency commissions, measure and normalize seasonality somehow, and many other indicators. Complex, big metric. 
we will draw a time series for this metric with a blue line in time. Let's take the classic gradient boot boosting, train the prediction of the value, train uh, and predict variance of time series by auto regression, and look at the segments and people in particular. Draw orange line for a specific segment. Let's call it India by country segment. Already at that stage, if we made a good classical ML prediction of time series, we can identify the pitfall segment in detail. Now we have a hypothesis that payment fraud may occur with the Indian rupee and dollar. Few words about ML. What about ML? I will be blunt here and suggest that you don't waste your time trying to optimize neural networks to catch anti-fraud. There is a very simple and understandable reason why. As theory of probability and the ML algorithms in particular work when the same event can happen many times in similar conditions. If this is done, then we can create prop function, build statistic and make hypothesis, whatever. Obviously, it is quite difficult and uh, long to train neural network, but it's even harder to make it stable. And uh, here I can compare anti-fraud with the crazy gladiator in arena, in uh, which you never know uh, what will happen in the next moment. So the same fraud can have many different complex variation. It is very quickly adaptive anti-fraud and uh, therefore uh, neural networks go back faster than you uh, set it up. So better to forget about it here. At first glance, it's uh, more or less simple. The model is trained offline on a data lake. Kubernetes launch a model in the persistent pod that listens data from Kafka. This data is a uh, user data. Why is it so easy? If we don't have heavily loaded services and we need only client data, technically any ML engineer can adjust it nowadays. But it's a realistic situation. Usually predicting some difficult task and uh, we need a lot of different representative data to increase accuracy. Reduce variance also and, and so on. In our case, uh, market data is general uh, necessary by definition of our fraud. What then? Then we need a hire of team C++ developers who will design an effective reader of market quotations. You can imagine how can how much the, the load on services will increase, the complexity of data security and so on. It is already worth thinking about the infrastructure so the anti-fraud system doesn't slow down the load on the product itself and the customer do not uh, experience delays. Therefore, we'll have a market provider and the aggregator block in our ML design. In fact, this is an extremely simplified scheme since uh, aggregation itself includes many processes, start from data quality checks and a fair architecture of microservices that uh, allows you to combine data in convenient tabular form with the correct timestamp. What other problem could be? It's too generalized, isn't it? Of course, we are trying to come up with a function that will well reflect the bad uh, action of customers. But often an ensemble of model is needed. You need to clearly understand that in order to achieve high accuracy in anti-fraud with a decent recall, it's not enough just to train model well. It's necessary to study very careful what kind of fraud you have and associate a separate set of metrics for each fraud accordingly. So in our example, the generalized payment cost can be divided into commission costs, market arbitrage on different platforms, arbitrage in time, cost for interaction with the payment system, counterparties, and so on. This, our infrastructure is expanding and requires an individual analyst data scientist approach to identify clusters of metric models that uh, will give the best accuracy of forecasts. On the top of answer in the model, you need to choose the ideal algorithmic solution that will match your risk appetite. Namely, to answer the question, how often we can make a mistake. Time to talk how to make this ensemble perform often. In the beginning, the SMP Spark was used as a default solution, but it was sorely lacking. Now Trina is used for modeling and computing in my current company, which shows itself much better due to completed work with the memory. 
Another option here would be GPU Spark calculation, but it's not trivial to run properly sometimes. A huge problem, especially in transactional and market data, is the uneven load on infrastructure. So our news, you know, we have a periods with a high load. In our case, it's a news, but in your company, it may be a different period. This period, period with a high priority. At this moment, all prioritization with all resources is given to the vital function of, uh, of the product. Uh, making transaction, trades, whatever. While the model uh, belatedly receives, we can calculate it properly. From this point of view of ML specialist, we have two solutions. Either to intelligently adjust the model to the high load intervals or to make a separate model, not in real time, that is looking for fraud on the high load, the second wall of calculation. In total, we'll have fast, efficient and accurate calculation almost always, but in the most difficult moments of product, we reduce the amount of resources allocated to anti-fraud block and either perform in a simple version without uh, wasting time and catching the big, biggest frauders, the most painful in terms of metric, or recalculate this entire block into the past uh, few minutes after load uh, stabilize. So a flight support team. In fact, in fact, we come to a very important part of the, today's story. And uh, what about the before and after ML model part? These are people, analysts and uh, anti-fraud officers standing there. Look at the probability formula, please. If we actively build a pipeline for uh, filtering good users from frauders, fro from fraudsters, while filters will be independent, it's just uh, with the right processes, we'll make a huge improvement in accuracy of the entire anti-fraud platform. Because our filters of analytical, ML, and uh, operational team will go independent way. All different teams have uh, their all researches and thoughts how to capture fraudsters. Let's look at the full pipeline using an example. The analytical department signal signaled that uh, strange activity was happening in India, for example, dropping a little deeper our metric and they noticed that uh, people associated with the one particular payment system had dropped it significantly on average. Okay, now a male engineer step into the game, look at the metric, study data, predict this metric, and uh, catch quantiles from people with a particular strange behavior. After the correct validation of the model, it became obvious that some of them can block it immediately. These are malicious fraud, but in the same part where the accuracy is close to average, ML engineers are not sure, their model are not sure. They give these cases to the operational team. They sort out the borderline cases there, digging into the deepest essence of why the fraud occurred and making decision with their heads and hands. What next? Monitoring. Also very important part. Monitoring both online and uh, offline metric is crucial to ensure the system operates efficiently. One of the most uh, important online metrics should reflect uh, the potential business cost of fraud. Such costs uh, related to the payment system may help us to prevent it or calculate uh, it in an efficient way. In particular, tracking not just the value, but uh, also the behavior of the cost and can provide the early detection mechanism for fraud helping business to balance fraud prevention with the operational team as well. Offline metric provide a deeper evaluation of the model security over time. Given the class imbalance often present in a fraud detection, metrics like pair EUK and particularly useful for assembling the model's performance. Additionally, monitoring the false positive rate is crucial as because we want to minimize uh, false positives and we need to maintain a positive user experience while effectively fighting against fraud. And the visualization of this metric allows to team analyst on or operational team identify emerging fraud patterns and spike activities. Therefore, as you can see, online metrics 
uh, using visualization and the special tools go directly to rapid response people to check complex edge cases, either when the model is uh, uncertain or where metrics are contradictory and they need to detailed analysis. Offline metrics, as usual, will help us to determine the degree of degradation of the model, and over time we will retrain it uh, once we need it. So thank you for your attention, and thanks to Con42 for the opportunity to talk about ML in antifraud. The main conclusion from my story can be drawn that you don't need to overcomplicate places with the mathematics that you do not require it, while the proper process approach allows you to improve the quality of the model multiple times. Thank you.